So Elon Musk just purchased this foldable home for $50,000 that could be assembled in under an hour and they're taking over the world. I have a box bull, yeah. You do? Some prototype box bull that's down in South Texas. Yeah. It's an out of the box idea, building a home on an assembly line. But that's exactly what's happening at Boxable. This is our 170,000 foot factory in Las Vegas. Let me give you a tour. This is incredible. The process begins uh, mostly right over here where we take the various parts and we assemble them together into the wall panels. So we have a few different layers that are laminated together. It's really precise, really accurate, and we get these, these better ratings on the product. The inspiration was to find a big problem. So it wasn't like we were inspired by uh, all the light bulbs go on and let's do this. It was uh, much, much more clinical than that. Uh, we said, let's find a big problem and fix it. And so we looked around at a lot of different industries and then this big aha moment, it's like, hang on a sec, building construction is pre-industrial. You know, pre-industrial just means it's not made in a factory. And we said, why? You know, so, well, because they're big. I'm like, can we fix that? You know? So right now, uh, the last price we sold a box book of seat at was $60,000. That's for a basically a 400 square foot studio apartment, kitchen bath, bed and couch. And if you look around in the marketplace, there's really nothing else out there at that price. And I think that's one of the reasons we have such a big wait list now for the product. It's got over 160,000 names on it. One of the big problems you see with factory built housing, which does exist, uh, is that it's kind of just failed to, to gain market share. So our initial innovation was that these houses actually fold up so they can ship highway legal at the lowest possible cost. Now that we can ship them far from a centralized factory, we can actually scale that factory and try to get on par with what you see at an automobile plant because a Ford or, or Tesla plant, they're putting out one car per minute in these factories. So why can't we do one house per minute? What was it like for Elon Musk to purchase a unit? How did that come to be? I've got this lady keeps calling me. Um, she says from Elon Musk's office, we had a chuckle. And uh, as I recall it, um, it, you know, he didn't really, we didn't really think it was uh, uh, Musk's office. And we said, uh, he said, no. He said, you can't have it, we've only got three. And so then when we figured out it was real, he said, all right, you can have one because we've only got three. Mm -hmm. So we delivered it and I think that Again, it's back to that thing where you, you try and do everything mostly right and you get a break and you get luck. So, so that was pretty cool. Uh, but a, a, a zillion articles got written about it, um, which was great. How do you, you think know. he found you guys to begin with? Oh, no idea. Probably, you know, pro I, you did have to ask him, but uh, he probably saw the picture of the unfolding house and, and just said, hey, that looks cool. Would you get me one? And that was it. I don't think he really put much thought into it. Wow. But I have no idea. I'm speculating wildly. So you can feel, you know, the, these panels, I mean, they're rock solid. Yeah. Like, you know, a regular sheet rock wall, you know, you could maybe kick through it with your foot. Uh, you know, you, you're gonna break your foot before you get through this thing. It's interesting, it's pretty much a styrofoam in, on the inside of this. That is wild. How customizable could it be with electricity or layouts? The idea is that we kind of have this standardized universal product and right now we have so much demand for just this Casita version that we're going to focus on that, keep it really simple, perfect that. But later on uh, we'll be able to do all kind of customizations uh, at the box level and then also you'll be able to stack and connect different boxes. And what we're doing is we're getting the bulk of the heavy lifting done for the builder or developer and then they're going to take our products, it's going to cut months and months off their cycle time and they're going to go ahead and customize it on site. The boxable building technology is actually multifaceted. Mm. We have a building shell, but within the building shell, we keep taking ever finer uh, resolution passes to get this thing into focus. So we have the technology of the building shell, but then, you know, what about the faucets? What about the furniture? What about the toilet? And literally, what about the, the furniture, the interior furniture, and the lights, and the lamps, and the windows, and the doors. So we apply those same principles of innovation and critical thinking and first principles uh, to all of it. And as the team grows, you've met some of our team today. Yeah. As the team grows, you know, Uncle Harold said, you know, do the important things first. It's not my Uncle Harold, by the way. Somebody <laughs> yeah, else's sure. Uncle Harold. Okay. Uh, do the important things first. A pretty good lesson. So. All the magic actually happens in the core. So you'll see that we've kind of got the room open here. This is where the kitchen bathroom is gonna go. All the rest of the space is just empty. And you know, we don't ship empty space, we fold it up. Yeah, you can see, you know, we've got, you know, kind of the, 
the plumbing, wow. the plumbing going into place, the, the HVAC for heating and cooling. Uh, we've got the, the flooring on here as well. And how long would it take them to go from that step here to this? So right now we're targeting about four hours for every station. Um, that time, you know, keeps coming down and down as we move forward and, and dialing the factory. So we're doing about one house every four hours. Are you worried about anybody copying your designs or being able to replicate it? So normally, if I was listening to somebody else and they said you have no competition, I'd say, come on, that's bull, that's hubris. But today, people don't even know don't even understand what we're doing. So this is pretty much the final station where they're doing quality control, a little bit of cleanup, and then they're gonna fold the unit up, shrink wrap it, and send it out the door. How many times could this be folded and then unfolded and folded and unfolded? Have you done a test? Quite a lot, yeah. probably more than anyone would, would want to. Uh, we've had a few units that have been kind of demo units that have gone unfolded countless times. Um, but the idea is that these are kind of permanent buildings that are you know, superior to other traditional permanent buildings, but just by their nature, they are totally relocatable. And I'm sure a lot of different people with different use cases will be, you know, deploying them here, taking them back, deploying them there. Eight and a half feet. Yeah. That is the magic number to ship at the lowest possible cost. Pretty much any other company out there that's shipping a wide load, that's not really scalable because you just incur so much shipping costs that you kind of lose all the advantages you had from building in the factory in the first place. Welcome to Welcome to the box of all casita. Oh, I love this. <laughs> so if we look at uh, the casita design, the first things you'll notice is the tall ceilings. So nine and a half foot ceilings, ridiculously tall. One of the best ways to create a sense of volume is the ceiling height. And we've pushed and pushed and pushed. And you think a lot of other homes have eight foot ceilings and even lower than that. So nine and a half, spectacularly tall. And that future proofs us to create um, a lot of different uh, combinations uh, yeah. going down the road. You want the home to feel big, so it feels like it's uh, sort of enveloping you and okay. is, is a comfortable, solid place. So it's very, very important. With the kitchen, what we wanted to do was, uh, with all of the appliances and everything, no half size appliances, nothing, nothing undersized at all appliance wise. So you see we have this generous Z-Wave counter, twin sinks uh, over a giant window, which is really nice. So you're doing the dishes, you can look out sure. the window and just a lot of cabinet space everywhere because storage is at a premium, you know, when you're around uh, 400 square feet. And then if we, if we move to, you know, uh, the, 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 back, uh, the back of the house, the back quadrant, you know, we have, you'll notice a full-size queen bed. Mm -hmm. Nothing is small, it's a full-size queen bed. Our own organizer closets here, which divide the space, which is really nice. These actually light up in production and cute, cute features like this. So if you're watching a movie and you get a little sleepy, you know, you can turn it around. That is great. Yeah, it's is just all of this included? Fun little thing. This is, uh, the furniture is not, which would include this. Okay. But all the appliances you see, which is where the money is, it's all included. Got it. As with all things that become super successful, you need everything and then you need luck. And luck is, is nothing mystical, it's just odds. Mm -hmm. It's just like playing cards, it's odds. There's no luck in cards, right? So you need luck as well. And when we were doing some of these videos, we did this video of it unpacking. And for us, the unpacking is simply a means to an end. We're, we're mechanical engineers and designers and we're fixing a problem. But for the audience, it blew their minds. And I think as a visual, it caught them and then they wanted to learn more. The bathroom is nice. Again, if we see this eight foot door, it's pretty remarkable in a 400 right. square foot space to have an eight foot door and a pretty generous, pretty generous full size bathroom. And I'll actually go ahead and step in here uh, one of the things we found is um, we couldn't find the shower we liked, right? So uh, this is a full eight foot shower and we designed our own. You see the logo here. Right. And in terms of cost reduction, you know, if you go to Home Depot, you're going to find those showers around uh, $1,000, $800. We engineered this. It's superior. It's taller. It's got glass. Uh, we bought this, we buy this now for under $400. What age did you realize though that that was a calling for you? You know, it's just weird, but a child. Really? Yeah, it was a child. I'd How do away, you know? I'd, I'd throw away the toys and I'd be cutting up pieces of paper with uh, sticky tape and putting them together. I really didn't play with toys. So I was always sort of wired that way, you know, genetically sure. on the one hand. And on the other hand, 
um, you know, sort of rebel against authority. Okay. So it didn't really make me a good uh, employee. Yeah. Uh, so between between that wiring and uh, the fact that I really didn't want to work for somebody else, Got it. Uh, that just led me down the path of entrepreneurship. If one person sits down, they're out of view of the other person. So one could go to bed, one could watch TV, huh. maybe with headphones on. But the rest of the time, even if we're sitting down here, I, I've got sight lines to the, other, to the other side of the unit. And that creates the sense of space. So uh, I got a question for you. Can I have one?